Question 54. In order to create a good solution for the mutual exclusion problem for concurrent processes, which of the following conditions much, must hold? First, let's make sure we understand it. mutual exclusion problem. That means that no two processes are going to be working uh, on the same uh, critical region at the same time. Critical region is the shared resource, is, is the processing time within a, in a the section of a process where the uh, the process needs to use shared resources. That's called the critical region. Actually, it's critical section is what most people call it, but this problem says critical region. So anyway, you have this process that's, uh, you have all these processes, process one, process two, however many processes, and most of the time it's doing, well, you know, it's doing something that's irrelevant to these other processes, but at a certain point, it may need to use um, data or memory register or something that's, that's shared. It's shared between the processes. So it needs to block out these other processes so that it can, it won't interfere with their work. And then, you know, it can stop that. So basically the um, mutual exclusion problem is, you know, you think about it as this process uses something and then, you know, blocks everybody else out from using it. And when it's done, it releases it so that other processes can use it. So, uh, and these are called concurrent processes here, in parallel processing. So 54, in order to create a good solution for this problem, which of the following conditions must hold? One is uh, no process should have to wait forever to enter its critical section. Well, I think we have to agree that we can't wait forever, otherwise if th there's no point of running the program if it has to wait forever. So that's definitely got to be one. Um, two, no process running outside of its critical region can block other processes from entering their critical re region. So if he, if he needs to enter the critical region and nobody's using the resource, go ahead, grab it. Nobody should block him from doing that. So no unnecessary blocking. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We don't want a critical critical region block our other processes. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's true. We 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 don't want to block anybody unless we're using the critical region. But this one says if we're not, if, if, if no process running outside of its critical region can block processes from entering their critical region. And three is there should be no assumptions about the speed or the number of CPUs. Ideally, I would think that would be the case. There are uh, no assumptions. You may have many processes. You might have only one process. You might have many CPUs. Who knows how fast they run. Ideally, it wouldn't matter. The, 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 uh, the solution would, for mutual exclusion would work in all cases. So, basically, that's why, uh, that's why the answer to this question 54 is E. One, two, and three. All three of those things would be uh, would be useful to create a good solution for the mutual exclusion problem.